Good morning, everyone. My name is Michelle DeFrancesco, Client Success Manager here at Simplify Media, the parent company of the HR Daily Advisor and the virtual HR Now Summit. Thank you all so much for joining us today. And I hope you, you all enjoyed our keynote this morning. Now we have another great session to share with you. Protecting Hybrid Employees, an E911 Compliance Checklist for Success. This session is sponsored by Everbridge. If you wish to learn more about today's session sponsor, you can find their information in the resource widget on your screen. And before we kick off today's session, I do wanna let you know that you can find all of our housekeeping items in that same resource widget that I had just mentioned. And I do recommend opening that up to familiarize yourself with today's session platform. And please do feel free to submit any questions that you have for our speaker by using the Q&A widget at the bottom of your screen. We'll be collecting all of the questions and following up with you via email after the presentation. You can also use this Q&A widget to let me know if you experience any type of technical difficulty and I'll be happy to assist you today. And one quick note before we get into our program that the link to your next HR Now session an industry update entitled HR's Critical Role in 2022's Candidate-Owned Hiring Market is located in both the Take Action widget and the Resource widget on your screen. So we recommend opening that up closer to the end of this session and having it ready to hop right into your next presentation. Okay, everyone, let's get our session started. I would like you all to welcome our guest speaker to the floor, Matt Schmid, Senior Product Manager at Everbridge. If you wish to see Matt's full bio, you can access this in the speaker bio widget on your screen. And Matt, let's get into today's session. I'm gonna kick it over to you to get started. Okay, thanks, Michelle. Hello, everyone. Uh, thank you for joining the webinar today. You might already know that federal E911 regulation compliance dates are not only upon us, but now well past us. Uh, we will discuss those dates for sure. So if you don't know about them, that's okay. But let's also talk about what's behind these regulations and most importantly, what it is exactly that your organization needs to do to be compliant. After all, compliance will mean protecting your people while keeping your business operational with reduced risk exposure. So a quick important note, we're providing information about compliance. So we do feel obligated to offer our disclaimer that we are not lawyers. So please do consult your legal counsel before taking any action or inaction regarding the information that we're presenting today. So a quick look at Everbridge and Red Sky. Red Sky joined the global Everbridge family in January of 2021, a little over a year ago. Uh, Red Sky is based in Chicago and has served the U.S. and Canada going back 20 years as the longest stretch of any e in one solution provider. Everbridge is the global leader in critical event management and enterprise resilience solutions that automate and accelerate an organization's ability to respond to critical events in order to keep people safe and businesses running. Just a note before we get into all of the compliance talk, know that Everbridge Solutions offer 100% email in one compliance, which we'll be discussing. So today we'll start off with the email in one checklist discussion with an inner or an overview of, of Kerry's Law and Ray Baum's Act. And We'll then get to protecting workers, the steps needed for compliance, and important dates and deadlines. Finally, you will receive the eNow in One Made Easy checklist from Everbridge and some other nice resources. So why is it the time to act now? It kind of comes down to one concept. Several years ago, the FCC published a new set of rules around 911 for so-called multiple line telephone systems or MLTS, and we'll discuss terms and definitions in a second. And in those rules, they created several effective dates. In fact, between Kerry's Law and Ray Baum's Act, which you'll hear more about, uh, there were three important dates to recognize. At Everbridge, we've been talking about these dates for a long time. For you, we just crossed the last date about two months ago in January. And we know we can't just throw a switch, 
and expect everything to work, right? It, it takes planning and people and budgets and, and a budget cycle. So we want to help you at least understand what you're going to need to do so that you can prepare and be ready to go. Some key terms we need to be aware of, uh, PSAP, Public Safety Answering Point. That's the physical building where 911 calls are answered. In the US, there's about 6,000 of them, some very small, that em some that employ over 1,000 a, a people and take millions of calls a year. Hard phones or uh, a static device. Um, this is really key because the FCC rules focus on this concept. It's most often a phone like you see in the lower right-hand corner, but can include other stationary devices that are enabled to make calls. And then soft phones. These are typically found on laptops that enable them to make what we all feel are normal dial tone types of calls. And if these devices, whether on a laptop, tablet, or even a smartphone, if they're drawing enterprise dial tone, then they fall into these regulations. But what about the, the phone system I just mentioned? The, the MLTS, pretty much every organization that has more than say 20 people in it has an MLTS for phones. And, and one more, the E9, the E in E911 stands for enhanced 911. Basically uh, this 911 type of call comes with lots more information than just a street address. So Carrie's Law came out of a tragic event. Uh, a Texas woman named Carrie Hunt was assaulted in a hotel room. At that time, her nine-year-old child tried to call 911 but did not know she needed to dial nine to get an outside line. Tragically, Carrie Hunt died that day and the hotel had to pay a $41 million legal claim to the family. So the first part of Carrie's law says you can't require anyone to dial a prefix like uh, like nine to get an outside line before reaching 911. Just dialing 911 has to complete that call. In the second part of the law, it was felt that had the hotel been notified that somebody in a hotel room had dialed 911, they would have been able to not only assist, but to also help the first responders find the caller, thus the emergency notifications component of this law. Ray Bombs Act, uh, and it's actually a, a, just a portion of what is known as the Ray Bombs Act, the law says that for every 911 call, there has to be a dispatchable location, which is a key term there, dispatchable location. And this dispatchable location is the street address. And then other information such as floor or zone or room number. And it's important to note that the FCC went out of its way to, uh, to not quantify dispatchable location as it's intent based, for example, they didn't say you need a dispatchable location for every 10,000 square feet, but more on that in just a bit. So today, what does it take to prepare, to plan, and to protect your employees and guests and visitors? Okay, so really preparing means understanding what's needed inside the building or on campus or with remote workers? What kind of technologies already come with your phone system and what might you need to, to supplement that? For Carrie's Law, the first thing you want to do for compliance is connect with your technology partners to ensure that they have a good understanding of your call servers, which is essentially your, your phone system. Then you need to understand who are the people that should be notified if ever a 911 call is placed? For example, you may have a, a safety department uh, with a dedicated person to notify or simply a front desk. Ray Bombs Act. Every building in your enterprise needs 
a legitimate street address. Again, this will take close coordination with teams across your organization. By the way, this is all in the checklist document with greater detail even more in the e now in one fast track to compliance handbook, which you will also receive. There's lots of e now in one solutions out there. Some are built into the call servers I mentioned, again, the phone system. Discover what your provider is providing natively and see if that meets your needs. And you're likely using uh, soft phone clients now on your laptops, like I was explaining earlier. Well, that just really kind of breaks 911 right there. Why? Because we can take laptops anywhere. So do your research. So plan. Okay. You kind of know what you have to do. Now, how do you do it? Let's review the law again and its impact. Carrie's law, okay, the, the due date has passed long ago. The asterisk is there because of exceptions around updates versus new equipment. But given the last 24 months, you gotta think lots and lots of updates have likely occurred. And if any system upgrades are planned, you need to make sure that you're planning to become compliant as part of that. And then dispatchable location. And I'm just gonna tell you, this is a pretty soft definition. This is why we have the disclaimer that we're not lawyers. The FCC in most states do not define what the dispatchable location means. The next few slides will talk and look at some diagrams as an example facility to help us better understand why or when we need dispatchable location. And the last part of the planning is to find your e in one solution. The dates are now passed. The project is absolutely complex, but Everbridge will get you to 100% compliance. So in the picture up here in the upper right hand corner of the floor plan, you've got this 30,000 square foot loading dock, open lines of sight. You can see all the phones in the walls. If a first responder comes into that or one of those doors, they're going to see who needs help. For these reasons, a single dispatchable location will do. If I go down to the warehouse, I've got these racks of equipment and I can't see across the room. So multiple dispatchable locations closed door offices, we can quickly agree that each office will need its own dispatchable location. And then finally, you've got this open uh, cube farm, and you could probably get away with just one dispatchable location. You're kind of getting the picture here. This matrix is pretty simple and straightforward. The dates are important, and they relate to Raybombs Act compliance. Across the top, you've got hard phones and soft phones. Along the left side, you've got on and off premise detail. In the middle, you've got the dates for those. One date passed last year and the final dates passed again just a couple of months ago. Okay, let's take our foot off the gas here for a second and reflect on just why these laws came to be. It's again pretty simple. Connect first responders with the information they need to successfully assist in an emergency. Get to the 911 caller as swiftly as possible, and finally to the technology, uh, to be technology agnostic. 911 callers need to receive emergency services, and technology just cannot get in the way. Finally, protect. So, why are you doing this? It's not just because it's the right thing to do. You want to make sure that you're protecting the most important assets in your environment, and that's employee and guest safety. But let's now be certain both your people and your business are protected. As you've seen, the responsibility of the employer is now documented, which means while before these laws were in place, somebody could decide that, you know, eh, nobody ever calls 911. Well, now when something bad happens, now someone can point to this and say, hey, you weren't compliant. This is where you can now plainly see that the corporate risk portfolio just grew significantly. So this is the commercial part of it, the Red Sky Solutions from Everbridge. And again, just to remember, find, route, and notify. Everbridge provides you the tools so that you're compliant. We have the solutions to find employees making 911 calls no matter where they are. Everbridge provides the routing to all those PSAPs in the US and Canada that we talked about and multimodal notification supporting remote workers. And then the Everbridge footprint covers the U.S. and Canada today with more to follow. The key is the tools for compliance are available and easy to stand up. This is a quick look at the actual checklist you'll receive. If it 
gets it, it gets technical pretty fast. So as I indicated earlier, you're going to need to collaborate with your technical teams or third-party resellers or whoever manages your telecoms. As I mentioned, you'll be receiving both of these resources, and besides the checklist, you will find lots and lots of detail in the Fast Track to E911 Compliance Handbook. And meanwhile, please help yourself to these easy links or share them. Thanks everyone uh, for coming today and for uh, staying with me through this uh, quick review. Hope you learned a lot, and uh, I will turn it back over to, uh, to Michelle. Wonderful. Matt, thank you so much. Uh, we really appreciate you spending the afternoon with us today. Uh, for those of you on the line, thank you so much for joining us as well. Uh, if you did have any questions for Matt or for Everbridge, please feel free to submit them using the Q&A box on your screen, and we'll be sure to send everything over to our presenter, Matt. Uh, I do want to send a huge thanks as well to Everbridge for making this session possible. And a quick note to those of you on the line still, uh, there is a link in the resource widget and in the take action widget on your screen that will redirect you to our next session, HR's critical role in 2020's candidate owned hiring market. You do have a little bit of a break between now and then, but please go ahead and click on that link. Uh, that way it's all set and ready to open up when we start that presentation in about a half an hour or so. Uh, thanks again, Matt. Thank you so much to Everbridge and thank you to everyone for joining us and we'll see you in our next session.